we were in Paris, Sarah and I were in Paris for eight days. We were really trying to start working on spring 25, really nailing down the feelings that we want. And as part of that process, it's really being very observational about how we are shopping as individuals mm -hmm. as well. And it was really interesting by the last day, we were at, um, we were at the Loewe store and we were with Gabe and I was trying on a jacket with you. Yep. And okay, I almost bought that jacket. Like it was weird to be like so caught up in a moment. And that's when Gabriel was just like, you guys, this consumerism is making me almost physically. He was over it. <laughs> he was over it. It was making him kind of physically ill at that point. And I think that what I observed when we were in Paris was that a lot of the feelings that we got when we were shopping, they weren't, um, they weren't like the butterflies and emotions of creativity and awe and desire. Yeah. It was like a competitive race. That did feel like that, I agree. So it's funny, was it between styles or was it between brands for you? No, it was just that I think that, um, I think that when I was around such so many bigger brands, it became so much about, you know, you're watching like this race to get something first. Like I was sitting in one store and 90% of the customers came in, they went right up to the saleswoman, they held out a phone, they pointed at the object, she said sold out, and then they left. Yeah. And it was making me think about, you know, when is it that you go in and you beeline and it's about just an object for you and maybe something that you get home and you're not even sure that you like it right. anymore right. or why you even wanted it to begin with versus when is it about a much more like total experience, the experience of understanding why you want something, wanting it because it really fulfills certain needs for you wanting because it may be, I don't know, it's not like I need to have this life deep experience with brands, but I want it to be more than just about like an object. Yeah. I mean, we tried on a jacket, right? You tried on the suede and then we tried on a leather jacket and it kind of was like, is this a gap filler for me? Is this something that I just want because I'm here and it like feels good to like try on something new? Yeah, I mean, I think in that case, I loved it, but it was just, you know, in, in Paris, between the like the gorge it seemed to be on like specific items, not even just fashion, but like maybe 10 hot items. Yep. And then um, and then reading all the reviews too, you know, there's so many reviews of these designers and I'm just thinking like, it just makes you wonder, I don't know, I think the fashion industry is in a very diff different spot right now and it's, it's making, it's, my notions going over to Paris. I sat down with Tracy and I was like, you know, for our runway show in September, and what we'll do again is we'll bring all of you guys to the show. Again, that has been the most fulfilling thing has been to have our customers at the show, the people who actually buy and wear the clothing. And I was telling Tracy, I, I want you to have such unbridled freedom for creativity because everyone knows that when you come back, into the store, into the showroom. Everyone knows that everything is so wearable, but I want to make sure that people get the bumps all yeah. the way up, you know, and then that you feel inspired, but you don't feel anxious. And I yes. think it's really getting between those two. And um, so I, I may not be making tons of sense because of the jet lag, but, um, <laughs> but I want people to feel inspired and not anxious. And I think really what Paris said to me more than ever with, with the restaurants where we mm -hmm. ate and everything was that the this is about the moment of the small business. This is about things that are real. It's about handwritten notes. It's about knowing who you're working with, being able to touch and being able to feel. And I am so glad that we used Kristen Magnanami for our campaign. Um, yeah. And the, the fall campaign was really all about 
hand, handwritten, you know, even down to the inspiration book. Raw, authentic emotions is what I got out of the shoot from her. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't feel like she was just a place card or like a hanger, per, yeah. per se. That she yeah. really felt what she felt when she was in the clothing. You said that. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So anyways, with that, um, what we do want to do is talk about some spring items because when we are designing, yes, of course, like creativity and all that emotion is top of mind, but it is also very much about the functionality and where are we wearing it. And so um, what I have on right now is the... Um, so you're wearing the Oliver, right? The Oliver pants and jacket and the bomber. That's right. Thank and the you. Stella, yeah. I'm saying that because, um, yeah. Well, it was interesting because you're warm, and I was like, is Annie okay? But it's the lights because this is actually it pretty. It is lights because it's very lightweight. Yeah, it's lightweight. Yeah. So I'm going to show you this pant. So this fabrication, it's lightweight, mm -hmm. but you can hear it that it has like some body and it nowhere near as stiff as canvas but it is a, you can see the twill lines in it. So it's got definitely more body than like pants that we call fluid pants and things like that. And because of that, what we did is you'll find on this Stella pant, mm -hmm. it's a little bit shorter than normal because I- um, It's sharper a little bit, right? Is it because it's crispier? Like yeah, crispier because hand? I think when, you know, you can't just go so big and oversized when it's a stiffer fabric, right? right? Sure. Because yeah, you don't like want walking on stilts. Yeah, you don't want to see the outline of the fabric before you kind of see that there's a human inside of it. Yeah. So I am wearing the size four in the pant, mm -hmm. and you can see it is hitting me full length, and I am wearing a, a flat, flat sandal on it. But what's great too is in these uh, yeah. stiffer fabrics, what's great is you can roll them up easily just to one level, mm -hmm. and then even to another level. And I will say for fall, there are a lot of like more culotte lengths happening. Yeah. So this feels very um, prescient. Is that yeah. the right word here? All the, right, all the words are right today. <laughs> you have jet lag. Um, and then the top here, this is the... Pebble. So this pebble crepe pebble tee crepe. in the same body sure. as our perfect tee, right? You get that same longer sleeve with the drop shoulder, so it's easy. So the, the deal about the pebble crepe is it's one that, like you're wearing the um, Italian sporty nylon. Yeah, and the Winslow. If I was wearing this nylon pant and a pair of sneakers and this shirt, I can roll this up and I'm absolutely appropriate at the grocery store. No mm -hmm. one is like, girl, where are you going after this? You know, like I look <laughs> yes. like I should be in the vegetable aisle and no one's wondering. Yeah. But... It is the type of top that absolutely, if I were going to a meeting, I would wear it in a heartbeat. And if I had a really nice dinner, mm -hmm. I would wear it with a really kind of over the top skirt and it would still be appropriate. Mm -hmm. So this is one of those really incredible fabrications that take you from play dinner work and it is absolutely 12 months out of the year. And the little signifiers that you know that it takes you everywhere is this kind of signature higher neckline. Mm -hmm. It is what absolutely makes something um, it's makes something very put together while being very effortless at the same time. And then I've got on the jacket, but I grabbed the large mm -hmm. by accident. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to throw yeah, that sure. on to see the proportions? I will say I kind of like the slot to the large for me, yep. but um, it is intended to be this is the fit of it. So it's this little, I, I love the fit. Yeah. Like, I don't know that actually I don't hate it, but I, I probably wouldn't wear it with this shirt. But wouldn't wear it with this shirt, could, but right, just but you can see else that is. it's an elasticized. I mean, yeah. it's really a true bomber. I would take this in my size, which is extra, extra large, but I still have enough room at the bust and at the waist because of the elastic. Yeah, yeah, this is a beautiful hardware. I just and Gabe wore this the whole time. Gabe yeah, did wear it the whole in time. Europe, so yeah, it really yeah. does. And he wore with the Stella, which I like that it was kind of giving him a, a silhouette at the hip or, well, at the waist. No, it was a good vibe. Yeah, it was nice. Um, okay, so can you talk about yourself for a second? And yeah. Gonna, um... So I was going to tell you about um, Amy's shirt. It's a non stretch woven, and that pebble crepe is slightly lighter than the plashette jogger. So if you were to compare fabrications, I would say that would be it. Um, what I love about it is that it was, you know, kind of like a dressy work date top, but it has the ease of like streetwear t-shirt. So you've seen me kind of, <laughs> you've seen me wear this like 
a little bit during the Paris trip. I styled it a little bit more open for everyday wear. I kind of like it buttoned all the way to the top. Um, and it just feels really easy. This shirt is oversized, but it's has a little bit of give in it. And so it's like 3% stretch. So if you wanted to wear this tucked in, crossed over, you could. But this easy feel for me is really nice with the Winslow. So yeah, wearing it with the Winslow. If I had this on with a skinnier bottom, I feel like I would see how oversized this is, but with an easy pant, it kind of looks balanced for me. And then wearing the Seth, just, it's a good vibe. So I also have this in pink. And I actually prefer the pink because it's a ring four color, wearing it back to a ring three. So even wearing it with the Oliver um, in the navy or the gray, or wearing it with the dark stone merit pant, or even the short would be, can you grab the pink version of this for me? So when we were talking about um, items that are maybe, it's in low stock, if you wanted to get this and we have it for you, you could actually take if we have a different size available, you could take a size down if you want it. So showing you this pink, you can see that the ruching or the shearing on the ruffle is kind of a contrast, so it stands out a little bit more, but I actually like that. Oh, hello. Just showing these two colors together. Yeah, no, yeah. I love the ruffly contrast. With, this is dark stone. And I think too, what's nice is the, um, these guys mm. are in town and- mm -hmm. uh, Hello. And Granger is amazing. So Granger, we brought back into stock in the white, right? Mm -hmm. But it's a creamy white. So before it was a little optic. And it's a creamy white? Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't, hmm. can you check that? I don't think that should, hmm. it should be the same. Oh, okay. it was just cool. a pure recut. Cool. Um, and then we've got the brown here. Mm -hmm. And so I'm gonna actually switch to the brown here. And I love, um, I love this whole tonal look here and when we think you when we talk about clothing that gives you emotions I think one of the things to really think about is one of my favorite books is called visual intelligence and what I love about that book is it teaches you how to really see things with your eye and I was talking with someone recently and they are um, no I don't know like influencer whatever you want to call it nowadays online stylist and they were saying that one of the most often requests that they get, which kind of sucks, but it's a request that they get a lot, is give me a dupe for that. Can you tell me where to buy the knockoff of that? And she was saying how disappointed it is to her that people want the knockoff of something. And I was thinking how maybe some people don't really understand that it's not necessarily that you even want the knockoff. Even if you think you do, maybe you don't want the knockoff. Maybe what you're really just trying to replicate is the vibe. Maybe you're wanting a vibe dupe instead. And so it was making me think like this outfit, I love this, right? And the thing is, is if this isn't in your range right now to be able to buy, or maybe you like the idea of it and you wanna vibe dupe it in your own closet. <clears throat> if you think about the book, Visual Intelligence, it's really about being able to look at something and say, what is it that I'm wanting to replicate? It's not about this fabric, this color, this texture, this jacket, this skirt, this sweater, exactly. It's about what is the vibe that you wanna re recreate? And I think what you're seeing here is, these are all these ring three colors. So you've got a lot of interest in color. <clears throat> I've mixed it with the brown patent leather. So then you've got this being mixed with this like kind of high shine. I'm wearing it with a brogue, so it's a little more masculine. <coughs> and I'm wearing a cardigan as a top, and I'm wearing three pieces that are all in the same shades. So if you're looking at a vibe dupe, this is what you're wanting to dupe on, right? So you don't have to go out and buy uh, the knockoff. And sometimes what a knockoff does is you get it home and it just kind of pisses you off and makes you feel a little sad. So, are we wearing the same skirt? We are. Yeah. Can we? So, hmm. it sits a little higher on me because I'm fuller at my hip, but okay. I'm wearing a size 14. Okay, so, yeah. so this is, then you'll see like sometimes you guys will write to me and you're like, I don't understand why this is hitting here or there. 
um, and you'll see that Couture is wearing the 14, I'm wearing the size 4, mm -hmm. and this one is hitting um, right above the hip bone for me, mm -hmm. and it's hitting, where is it hitting? It's where my belly button is. Okay, so in terms, like when you're thinking about where things are going to hit on you, because it's hitting higher on Couture, right above the belly button, right? Mm -hmm. That's like a three inch difference. Mm -hmm. So it's right true. away, you're gonna lose three inches in the body length from that alone. And then we're losing length because you're definitely taller than I am. Yeah. So these are things to kind of um, do that math when you are trying you have to something at home. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah, because I love it this length. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, but I've got a full length, so cool. Right. So, one of the things I really enjoy about spring is that we have pumice and a variety of body styles. So if you were creating a capsule wardrobe for yourself, actually in any of the styles, you would be able to get navy and black and kind of match them together. You often call Tibby Navy, you know, this deep, dark, rich navy that almost looks like black, but not yet truly like this light navy. So actually, I'll show you. So for those of you that have asked, about this we're going to tell you where to find this we're going to tag them later but i think it's a really great option to just think of this as not a neutral but you know maybe this fills a gap for you i was really craving something that's not black because i have a few black limbs maybe the detached and pumice i can just wear back to other actually every ring i would wear it with every ring i would wear it with the resort red the resort red um slip skirt would feel really nice here also with maybe i would wear this with dark stone but that's more of the same that would be a calming easy um relaxed feeling if i were to wear this with black the pant that i had on earlier this would feel a little bit more sharp um not harsh but like a higher contrast so wearing this with the circle t-shirt top and pumice and this also comes this is called pumice gray but it reads like this kind of gray like I wouldn't call it sea foam what would you call this I guess hummus right Sarah what do you think hummus she said hummus wait I was hearing hungry? hummus I'm like that is not good hummus. I, like, I, I, don't I say hummus. words differently maybe it's my Maryland wait, what you, accent what, what word do you use no, great, pumice. Oh, pumice. I say pumice yeah like I say what is it called no, the, I cement. Like, I, cement. I, I cement. hummus and thought if you eat hummus in that color, you're going to be sick for like... I had hummus for lunch ever. and I, I'm doing you good. You would be. You, I wouldn't suggest you eat that. No. Anyway, so this is the vibe that I wanted with hummus. Not hummus. Pum. Pum, 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 pum. Pumice. Pumice. I said that. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's like Georgia. Maryland is its own little place. Own little, <laughs> got it. No yeah. Okay. All right. What's going on here? Cool. So I am wearing the uh, bonded skirt, and I will say in Paris, this was my most worn item mm -hmm. in the suitcase for sure. Three um, different ways I think you wore it. So many different ways, yeah. and um, it, re it really just was my savior skirt because I love it. First of all, it was full on winter time in Paris, so wearing it with a boot and with a um, uh, stirrups in and, the compact knit. Yeah, uh, and I wore it with that Celine uh, vintage uh, jacket that I bought at Printom, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. Printom has hands down the best vintage store. I think it's just the best selection. Very curated and beautiful. And none of it smells. And it, it did not smell that it's such a challenge for a vintage store, so I'm not riffing on that. But it doesn't smell. It can go right in your suitcase. It's cleaned. It it's been loved. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but I wanted to show it here with the um, knit sweater. Mm -hmm. And I think this for me, for someone who has a lot of great basics in my closet, this is something that really just like adds like some real interest and glue in mm -hmm. my closet. And it's something that you'll have forever. And I've, I've gotten so many questions about trends and it, at this point, I don't even know what that means anymore. I think that people have really taken their style into their own hands and you're not gonna let something be a trend or not. So is there a trend for this kind of volume in the sleeve? Yes, there is. Is there a trend for like something that's been all hand crochet? There is, but it doesn't mean that next year it goes away. And for me, this is a piece that I would have in my closet forever. And in fact, I actually, 
don't even need this piece because we did something similar a few years ago, but if you didn't have it, this is a piece that you would want. And it's been updated slightly, right? It's been updated slightly. The yarn is a little bit lighter mm -hmm. and, um, and the body is not as voluminous or boxy. It was, it was bigger. I'm sure Tra Tracy is going mad for this all black look with the texture because we talk about how texture, if you're someone that wears all black, is kind of your ton. So yes. just now Amy kind of had like a ton with the shoe, which actually, this is pretty stretchy. Have you talked about this at all? This this it work. Oh my God. It's great. Yeah. yeah, it's got stretch in it. So this is, and do we have the bag here? The, um, get it? the bag with the, the one you shot, the... Okay, so this is um, best shoe in the universe. It was just voted by this group of these two women <laughs> named Amy and Katura. It is. It but feels it is. like a slipper, but it's way it's, more elevated when you put it on because it's like hand crocheted. It kind of spreads a little bit, so it's it's not tight on you, but it's snug enough that you can kind of put your foot in and like. And I think what's good is it, it has a very strong point of view, yes, but it is very manageable at the same time. Like, I'm not going to yeah. lie, Sarah and I were at Leve and we tried on the rug shoe, the pump. That, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it was amazing, but like in my mind, I had one place that I could wear it. And I was going to look great if I was wearing it there, but at 2200, I needed a few more places. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one that I'll wear a ton. This is the thing that. You know, when I'm in jeans and a tee, it will dress it up. When I'm in something very formal, it will take it down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, I want to go to a wedding and I want to wear just like a black bias dress and then wear this Love. and a great pair of earrings and I'm going to be like, good to go. So this is a big, you would consider, correct? Mm -hmm, this is a big too. Yes, but I think that, so let me put this on back on here. I want to talk about why these proportions work here. Mm -hmm. When we talk about big, slim skin, remember, Ooh. I've never said big, yes. sl big, slim skin so that you can like show your waist or that you can look slimmer. That's not what it's about. Big, slim skin is about creating movement for your eye so that your eye can move around on the body and it doesn't just like pop. And so for me, I'm wearing uh, the skirt like this. So it's coming out here. So even if this doesn't seem slim because right. it's thick and crocheted, right. compared to this measurement here, this is giving this like big, this is giving slim. Right. This no is matter giving if this big, is big again. Right. And then, so where I would probably feel overwhelmed is if I put a turtleneck on underneath of the, mm -hmm. this and like a big wide boot. But I've got like the skin popping out in different areas. The, the goal of big slim skin, you know that there's a human in there somewhere and you're giving the eye some activity and movement on the body. So it's the same as what you're wearing right now. Yeah. Like, this is this is your big, this mm -hmm. is your slim, you've got your skin. Yeah, my skin is on my ankles. And I think- I don't feel like I have to do this, but if I had a boot on and I was covered, I would probably push my sleeve up a little bit to get some skin, because it's- And let's, let's pretend, even though I, I know you wouldn't do this, but like, mm -hmm. let's pretend that you had a big like peasant skirt on with this. Mm -hmm then immediately, I think you'd be tempted to pull this up. Right. And not it, it tight, yeah. right? So you're gonna bring it in and yeah. let it go back out again. Yep. And, um, you know, you wanna create the eyes movement. This is not about, you know, mm -hmm. someone giving you a waist. Um, now I'm a little rule of three overwhelmed here. One, if I two. were to, mm -hmm. yeah, I've got one, two, three, I'm, I'm covered. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna switch to just the black clean sandal here. And I want to show you this sandal. This is one that um, these are, you know, a favorite. Pauline is based in Paris. This is where she designs our shoes. And then these are produced in Italy. Mm -hmm. And um, I am always craving a shoe that is really, really clean, that you don't have a contrast here because I want this shoe to behave in a way that it just quiets down an outfit mm -hmm. and for me if this had been a contrasting sole it would add like another element little things like that keep me from wearing a shoe as much as I want to um, the other thing important with this shoe is one of the reasons when we do something that is this delicate in the hand 
This has the single sole here. It doesn't have like a wide welt or anything. And it has this little- um, Pac-Man, I call it a Pac-Man. I don't yeah, know. That, like, like don't murder anyone in this and then run away because they They'll will find you from, <laughs> from the heel. Um, but when something is this refined, this is where this square toe is everything for me. So um, this is, I have lots of these brands in my closet of, well, not recently, but like John Benito Rossi, Chanel, um, uh, who did Cecilia used to work for, Jimmy Choo. They tend to do like a more almond shape here in a sandal like this. And it is, the effect is a little more ladylike. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you and, are ladylike, but you still crave something different. But it's, it's because I do like things lady that I need that contrast and mm -hmm. that friction. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you wonder like why you don't feel something in your clothing, sometimes it's as simple as like, you know, knowing if you dress more ladylike sometimes, that you don't have something that's giving that good friction. Mm -hmm. And it's why we, we were at the store this morning, I was talking to Nina, about the fits on the um, tuck jean. Yep. And it was interesting because Nina's like 5'11", right? And she wears a 26 in the tuck, and then I'm wearing a 27 in the tuck. The tuck in the 26 looks absolutely beautiful on Nina, mm -hmm. and that's how she wears it. And she's got her whole like Norwegian vibe thing happening, right? Like amazing. But for me, when I'm wearing the tuck, I don't, want to wear it as clean mm -hmm. as Nina wears it. I like to wear it with a little more attitude and it's not a cool attitude. Mm -hmm. And I'm like really careful about explaining that guys. It's not like you can choose to wear a cool attitude or not. Like that's not what I'm saying, but it's definitely a bit of attitude where it was interesting. We were in Paris in Schneeweiss mm -hmm. and um, with that store, those beautiful women from uh, Antwerp came in and I would say, like, they would be like, that's a skinny jean, you know? Like, Their jeans were pretty wide. Just huge. Yeah. Absolutely huge, right? Yeah. And it's just a different attitude. So it's not cool versus not cool. It's a different type of attitude. And so I tend to lean into this attitude because there are other things in my closet that are more pulled back and restrained. So mm -hmm. it's a good balance for me. So it's one of those things, like, it just depends on what's in your closet, how you like to mix things up. Are you wanting to add more like slouch and attitude into your look? Mm -hmm. If so, that is the point of view of this jean. But if you want an incredible jean that looks amazing on you and is more tailored to the body, size down in this jean. And if totally. you want it even more tailored, size down twice in the jean. Because I know for sure I wear a 27, I know I could wear a 26, and I know I could wear a 25. Right. But I choose the attitude of the 27. It's where my my eye is yeah. and where Nina's eye is, is fabulous and great and just different. Would know? that have to do also with a modifier for her at all? <clears throat> probably. Mm. You know, I think I'm probably a little conscious of like living in Greenwich, Connecticut and not wanting to fall into the fray. Mm -hmm. So that's my humor, my way of like, Combating stick that. it to the man. Stick it to the man, do so, it. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, when is this purse coming? Oh my goodness. Okay, anyways, best ever purse. And this is our shopper. We did this um, based on our like shopping bags mm -hmm. from uh, San Miguel. So this is the shopper that's coming. It is um, so beautiful. What I wanna show you is that, so it has the belt. The belt can be worn, I was gonna right? say, can that be worn? I'm pretty is sure it's the curls or is this is a new belt? The belt can be worn, says Sarah. So two for one. And, um, well, actually three for, because inside the bag, you have this detachable little bag, which is really good for me because like my shit just goes flying. Mine too. So you've got this little bag where you can put like things. <laughs> things, okay. Things that are small enough to And then the on the inside of the bag is where we put the tibby. So you're welcome. We didn't put a big <laughs> ass like, Blech. I know. I we had a lady that. looking for that the other day. She was like, 
I can't find a brand on here. Anyway, I was like, you must not know Tibby because it's never on the outside unless it's a ring. So she wanted a big ass. Yeah, she okay. did. So she can put that on the outside. All right. Likes. Well, you know, she can write in and we'll. So anyways, I want, you know, what's beautiful about this bag is, um, Reed shot this the other day. We did it like a Rorschach test. I can't wait to show you guys and see what you think. But it's got this leather lined, uh, kind of like wire material. So it sticks, it's very sculptural. You can move it around and play with it. Okay. And um, I can't wait to carry it everywhere. And I do believe that we only made tw 25 of these. So I, th I think the deal is these aren't going to be sold online. I think these are gonna be sold. You could see? There are gonna be some on Ecom, okay. By April. Okay, so these, um, if you are interested in this bag though, please reach out to one of the stylists, guys. We are uh, we are not trying to underproduce in order to create anxiety, but when I do new things, number one, I wanna underproduce because I just wanna make sure that we've done the right thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we've done the right thing here, so I hope I haven't shot myself in the foot, but, um, I mean, if you picked up Business of Fashion right now and read that like the luxury stores are trying to figure out right now how to get mm -hmm. rid of $2 billion worth of goods, the world That's does not need tons more products. So even things like the set, yes, they're sold out. Yes, we have a reorder in on them, but this is how we're gonna keep doing this. So I have no desire to flood the world in tons of product. And when I was in Paris this week and you got to meet all those global specialty stores, yeah. um, they feel the same way. And this is about, you know, produce not, want not, like really just be very focused in what we're doing here. What I love is that Tippy is small enough to make those pivots, right? Because if it was a big company, they would owe people a shit ton of product. And then, yeah, I said it, bleep it out if you want, if this were network TV, but it's not. Um, we don't have to do that. So. Since I'm still here hanging in the in the fray, but not in the fray that you said in Connecticut, I guess. Um, for those of you that were looking for this great Terry, I was gonna say the wrong word, this loop Terry in gray, I would love to talk to you about the impact that the lavender could have in your wardrobe. And if you're looking at this under the lights, it almost reads as if it were just like a really off white. And I think sometimes you have to treat it's funny, Nick, Amy has on a brown skirt, and I was like, gosh, this will be great with that. You have to treat some of these like no colors that are kind of like lavender or like lighter as your own personal neutral. So I would wear this back to brown with stone, even with red, and just treat it like it's not lavender. I mean, for God's sake, I'm struggling with my eyes. Reed, is this white or is it lavender? It's, yeah, but it's subtle, very subtle. See, the team says it's a very subtle. So that was just a little, Look at Reed. I know. The big words on yeah. The <laughs> Reed is our photographer, our in-house sweater sample wear. Actually, and, these are his. And, 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 puppeteer, soon to be announced, and you'll know what that means soon. Oh, so there may or may not be some puppeting? How, would it be puppeteering? Yeah. Going on? Puppeteering. Puppeteering. That's yeah. Puppeteering. And that's all you get. Uh -huh. I had to shut it down. So anyway, I would like to encourage you to try the lavender for size. Just think of it as a not white, but also not a gray. Okay, cool. Um, while on lavender, I would love to also talk about the acetate. So I had a woman write to me recently and say, I am going to a spring wedding that is not quite spring. So we were in Paris with what seems like spring because it was raining all the time. And some of these colors feel a little bit, maybe too bright for now when it's like rainy and dreary, but wearing these back to room three really settles them down, would you say, Sarah? Sure. Yeah? So even though these are two variations of lavender, you can see that one is like a full on serioso lavender, similar to this uh, lavender that we had last spring. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just holding this for not for styling, but just for color <laughs> reference, that this is a great way for you to pair this lavender sheer top into your closet. And you would, what else, what other colors would you wear this with? 
the which with the lavender. Sorry. Oh. Well. Um, I would wear like the khaki silk sit chino situation. Okay. Just which is a good thing because we're gonna tell you where this guy, um, which one of our partners have this. Um, so I would wear this. I would mm -hmm. wear any iteration of denim. I actually really love a black tuck jean with this. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Lo and behold, I'm wearing. And just like that. Vanna. <laughs> right? Vanna Brown. <laughs> there you go. Um, so talk to me about this because this gives a different feeling, right? Black, totally. this high contrast yes. with a lavender. So for me, it's less really about the color contrast, but more about the fabrication contrast. Mm -hmm. So. This silk acetate, I think, is rather feminine and one of our quote unquote prettier pieces of the collection, and it definitely gives off a, a daintier vibe. And mm -hmm. I think the tuck jean, and um, why we love it so much, is because it does kind of give you this like tougher illusion, especially mm -hmm. with the pin tucking detail. And so I think that that really creates a nice juxtaposition. Mm -hmm. um, for those who kind of find themselves in the middle of the CP scale, but, or if you find yourself super creative and you want to be reined in or yep. super pragmatic and you want to test the limits a little bit, I think um, this is a really good way to do that. So just as a reminder, because we're talking about the CP scale and I think this is like just as big of a conversation to have along with the color wheel. Totally. Remind people where you land on the CP scale. Me personally? Yes, like, no, oh. you personally, Sarah, that is pre-tibby, post-tibby, um, can't fight the feeling. Sarah, I don't know. I would say I'm like a seven creative, three pragmatic. So, yeah, I'm, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. We're not jet lag. No, we're not. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> um, okay, so I wanted to show you guys what's the name of him? Basket weave? Basket weave patent yeah. skirt. Mm -hmm. right. So, um, okay, you get promoted. I meant to say whoever named it first. Um, good job, Sarah. We're gonna make you brand director. <laughs> um, all right, so this is a basket weave pattern. And you'll see this is this really interesting, rich chocolate brown here. I love black, white, and this brown together. Um, I'm showing this with the, um, the sweater here. Which the menswear, for that, um, the fine gauge. Menswear. I'm sorry, the fundamental. Yeah, it's very fine gauge sweater. Right, and this mm -hmm. is in fundamentals, and this was, um, I don't want to bore you with this, but I'm gonna say it again. The reason why this is the best sweater in the whole world is that it's really hard to get a proper fine gauge cotton. So you can get fine gauge like merino wool and cashmere, but every time you do cotton, it tends to always come out looking like a sweater from the gap. It's always been really hard to get it with the level of refinement that I want. And I was really craving the good long sleeve cotton sweater because mm -hmm. I wanted it to be really, really year round mm -hmm. and to have the ease of a t-shirt, but to have the refinement of a, um, of a full needle knit here, which is what this does. So you've got this ribbing here, the ribbing up here and it's, it is a very rich sweater and a very beautiful fine gauge. And um, and I love it because it just feels like you're wearing a t-shirt, but you're incredibly put together at the same time. And then the bonded fabric that I had on earlier in the wide skirt, this is the same fabric in the jacket here. And this is really meant to be a jacket that is just one of those forevers in your closet. Jackets are kind of tricky sometimes because you never know like what time of year to to bring a jacket on. And so the approach that I have for jackets is really like when you find the jacket that you think will be your key jacket, that's when you get that jacket. So um, I certainly hope in New York that I will not be wearing this too often in about a month but I know that it will be a jacket in my closet that I will pull out very, very often for the rest of my life. And it really is meant to be a rest of your life jacket. I was having a conversation with this really incredible woman. We did a podcast while I was in Paris. She's based in Milan. She used to work for Goldman Sachs in LA and she has kind of this business podcast. 
and she was talking about how people buy nowadays and I was saying that back in the day at the risk of like sounding like you know son I used to walk to school every day like that kind of stuff which I did actually but I think that one of the important ways to think about buying right now no matter where you are age-wise on the scale is think of your purchases in a vertical way and not a horizontal way and what I mean by that is it's not about acquiring more it's not about getting tons of stuff in your closet. It may be, if you're just starting out with building a closet, that what you wanna do is aspire to keep leveling up on the items in your closet. And I was explaining that I started off with Sears and JCPenney. Actually, we started off with Sears, then we got to level up to JCPenney. Mm. Then we got to level up to Belk Hudson, which was like Rich's, Macy's. Mm -hmm. And then um, mom took us to Lauren Taylor. So around That's ninth grade, we got Lauren Taylor. I don't know what mom and dad were doing in the school system. A little more bucks, we got Lauren Taylor. Then when I got to school, um, I think I got stuff from The Gap for mm -hmm. the first time. That was really exciting. But of course, like Molly on my in my dorm, she had stuff from like The Limited, and that was a big well, deal. A big I deal couldn't afford The then. Limited yet. So, but when I got out of school, I could get The Limited. Then I'm working at Ogilvy. And then I'm like starting to figure out what my style is and I'm heavily shopping now off price places because mm -hmm. I'm looking for suits. But now I'm buying suits at Ann Taylor. Mm -hmm. So that was the next big thing. Then I leveled up to Banana Republic for mm -hmm. like casual wear. Then I bought some Ellie Tahari back in the day. Oh wow. Then it went to Armani. Then it went to Barney's private label. Then it went to Donna Karen and then it went to Calvin Klein. It's funny you skip your theory stage. Did you have a theory stage? I didn't have a theory stage because theory and I started at the same time. Mm. So I, so you I were, would you were, by then you were. By, by then I was Tibby, right? So, um, yeah. but I would have gone through a theory stage That's for sure. So the way to think of it though is keep leveling up on your closet. Try not to grow it out too wide, mm -hmm. grow it better. Well, not wide, but better. Um, so anyways, this is one of those forever type jackets for mm -hmm. me and if my 1990 self had bought this jacket mm -hmm. i would absolutely still have it i was gonna it say still have it i would still have it today for sure i'm curious about the forward i'm not gonna put it on but i'd love yeah. to just hold it up to my oh i was gonna sit on my shoulders but just to see where it hits me so it'll probably be like maybe an inch more because i would size up two sizes when yeah. you're so grading maybe like yeah inch inch and a half more. i love this okay first of all with your nail polish this is so beautiful katara but so I just want to point out here that yeah, I like seeing this with the way this feels with the leather. We mm -hmm. said don't buy wide, buy mm -hmm. buy tall. The other thing too is remember when you're out shopping. Like actually, this is really good that we're all together here. So you've got a cotton fine gauge. Mm -hmm. This can look really flat against clothing that's too flat. Mm. So if I was wearing this cotton gauge, even though this pant has like this little bit of silk in it, mm -hmm. I'd probably be tempted to give myself more friction here mm -hmm. with a shoe that has friction. I wouldn't want to wear a Napa clean shoe. Mm -hmm. So actually when I did this sandal in the Python, I did it for that reason because I knew that we had some of these cleaner mm -hmm. fabrications mm -hmm. that would want some more, fa more friction in them. Mm -hmm. But then of course, when I'm wearing all this friction and texture here, I'm not so anxious to do this unless I was wearing like a clean black mm -hmm. tank or something, but then I might be sandwiching myself, so I'm not sure. Um, but really mixing like the leather, the bonded, and the little bit of shine here, mm -hmm. and I'm mixing the cotton with the shine here. Like when you are building your closet, don't get into a rut of like, oh, I love this fabric. I'm just gonna keep buying this fabric over and over again. Right because that's when you can have 30 different styles, but if it's all in cotton or it's all in tropical wool, you are going to feel very repetitive. So who has this top that sold out? Do you? Yeah, I do. I have it on a piece of paper. And while I'm pretending like I'm reading because I can't see <laughs> And it. then I'm gonna actually read. Yeah, I love, actually, we're like the people cooking food and it's really under the thing on the Today yeah. Show. So oh, it's like, that. yeah. Wow, it's all done. Yeah. I can't read either, guys. I mean, I can read, but like, I wear glasses now. All right, so this top, Betty Jean in Little Rock, Arkansas has this. I love it's like a roll call. Um, Betty Lynn in San Francisco, I was there. I love Betty, well, I love everyone. Um, Claire Vaux in Kansas also has this top. Space 509 in Chicago. Scare the shit out of me. <laughs> so that's a big deal. I was like, whoa. <laughs> okay, so 
A lot of joy there. Just Facebook. talk amongst yourself for two okay. seconds. The Hive, our girls at The Hive in Alexandria have this top. Um, Scarpa has this top in Charlottesville, Virginia. Uh, Rowan in Richmond. Thank you. Rowan <laughs> in Richmond, Virginia also have this top. So if you are seeking this top, um, you will find it there. And just so you know, like I am wearing an extra large in this. This is a really beautiful, soft fabrication. I wore it um, with a slimmer pant in Paris. I will also wear it with a skirt. I will also wear it with a, probably, I would, I just don't have it in me to put the other shoes on, but with an open, maybe more skin showing type of shoe. Yeah, cool. Yeah. All right. Can I have my distressed? Ooh. One last thing. So we've done some um, interesting shoe campaigns. You guys are going to see them. Um, but I wanted to show you guys, we also did a thing where we sped up time with the set. So we've shown it here, um, quite pristine. And then this is the set after about, I'm going to say three years. Is this what? is in between, right? In between. So what I wanted to show you guys with this campaign, what's important to know is this is really about feeling the freedom to just wear your clothes and to make your own mark on it. And, you know, don't be so, not that there's anything wrong with a brand that would distress the shit out of the shoe ahead of time, like that's fine or whatever, but it's a little bit cooler when every little bit of distressing is your own personal you mark on it. it. When you're like, you know what, that's what happened when that luggage ran over my toe. My mother-in-law wore airport. ripped jeans to her house one day and she was like, you do that or did you pay them and I was like I bought them like this she was like I mean if you did it yourself that's different yeah like, and it's true when you do it yourself it's different yeah and so um that's what that's going to be about and just in general we'll end it with this note wear your clothes you're the one that bought them you own them wear them wear them like crazy get spots on them and be okay with it because that is life mommy um, juice mommy juice You'll be sad if you try and clean that out when your kids are like 23 and you're like, I wish I had that shirt with this. And they don't want to hug you. Yeah. I think it's coming. Um, and then also get really good at visual intelligence. That's actually the name of the book, but it will help you figure out when you are looking at something, what is it that you love about it and how can I dupe that rather than actually buying a knockoff. Um, I don't want to shame anyone here, but I, I really have a problem with knockoffs. So there you go on that. Um, and I always have. Um, and then the third thing here is um, try and shop with people who make you feel something. And I'm going to tag a lot of the items today with the specialty stores that we do business with. And these specialty stores are incredible people. Every day I am so thankful that we have aligned our business working with specialty stores. Um, they are humans. I think the human touch is wonderful. And um, and every time when you shop with them, it really creates this circular economy. Everything goes back into, into your world and maybe not so much to someone's home in Hawaii or whatever, but I'll just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay guys, we will see you next week. We will not be jet lagged. Um, it'll be on Wednesday. On Wednesday, like normal. Your normal time. And then the following Wednesday, I'm going to do it from St. Simons with the St. Simons team. That's so we good. will see you then. Bye, guys. Thanks.